Well, joining me also now is Vladislav Davidson, fellow at Atlantic Council and columnist at Tablet Magazine. Thank you uh, so much for joining me this afternoon, Vladislav. I mean, th firstly, uh, what, what do you make of Boris Johnson's uh, visit to Kiev the last couple of days? Uh, thank you for having me on. Look, unlike the gentleman who just spoke, I have no skin in the game whatsoever about British politics. Uh, I mean, I wish I wish you people well. I'm a, a, as a Ukrainian American, uh, I wish you well. I live in Paris. I couldn't care less about internal British politics. Uh, so his coming to Kiev is such a great thing. We love it. It shows tremendous respect. It shows tremendous. Uh, support. And also, Kiev is not safe yet. I mean, there are bombs falling. There's a war on. He's taking a risk. It's a moderate risk to his health and to his security, but he's still showing some amount of bravery, and he's showing some amount of skin in the game. He could get taken out by some crazy uh, Russian sniper or whatever. It's not a secure situation. So him coming to Kiev shows tremendous you know, masculine virtue or bravery, whatever you want to call it. So we're, we're grateful. I mean, it's a good thing. But what, what do you say to those that say that actually uh, it is a level of grandstanding or they might say that actually when it comes to some of the things that Ukrainians have demanded, uh, such as the no-fly zone and other things, that actually the West has failed to intervene fully in the way that perhaps some Ukrainian leaders have um, wanted. And actually, ultimately, uh, them visiting is not necessarily going to make the material difference to the conflict that perhaps people desperately need right now. Uh, first of all, Boris Johnson is a politician. Let's, let's start with that. Uh, he's a politician. Politicians do things in order to increase their ratings and their votes, obviously. That, that aside, uh, well, clearly, uh, we're, we're all hoping that the West provides more weapons, especially the, the Americans and some European countries. The, when we speak of the West, it, it's obvious that we have to divide the countries which are being very helpful, the Poles, the Romanians, the Baltics, obviously, and the British. It's very important but to understand that the British are doing as much as we can expect. From those who are not doing as much or don't want to see the Russians lose outright or very quickly. So there are European countries who are not doing as much. I can name them. Uh, they don't need to be named, but the British are doing as much as the uh, Ukrainian population and the presidential administration can hope for. So we're grateful to the UK. And so when Boris Johnson comes, it is a heuristic for the fact that the British Parliament and the British MOD are sending harpoon missiles to Odessa, are sending quiet support, are sending technical support. So we're grateful to him for coming because, one, it is uh, not a secure situation, and B, it's a signal that the British Parliament is sending all the technical support and military support that they can. So is it uh, helpful to him in his own domestic political needs? I have no doubt of that. Also, it's, that's, that's his thing. That's okay. I have no problem with that. Uh, and, and just very quickly, because um, we, we don't have much time, I mean, in terms of we are, where we are at now in the conflict and in terms of negotiations, what, what do you think... Uh, that Vladimir Zelensky should be pushing for? I mean, should it be uh, neutrality for Ukraine? Or do you think that that will be very difficult in relation to the support for uh, accession into NATO and the European Union on the part of the Ukrainian people? What do you think? Look, the Ukrainian people are winning and they feel that they're winning. They just won the Battle of Kiev. That is a tremendous victory. The Russians have retreated from Kiev after throwing some of their best troops into, into the fray and losing a lot of their elite troops. They are going to, they're going to uh, make a stand of a Donbass. They're going to have tank battles, the kind that we have not seen in Europe since 1942 or 1943. We're not going to have seen anything of the sort that we're about to see in Europe for 80 years. So we'll see how the Ukrainians are doing after the Battle of the Donbass in a week, in two weeks, in three weeks. After that, we'll, we'll see what concessions or lack thereof the Ukrainians are going to have to be making. My comments are, as, a, as an expert, are descriptive rather than prescriptive. I'm not going to tell the Ukrainians to make, uh, uh, you know, uh, concessions first. Let's see how they're doing on the battlefield first. They are winning now. Uh, I, I hope the UK and the British people continue to help us and to continue sending uh, uh, technical support, medical support and diplomatic support. But let's not start giving concessions until we start losing, which we're not yet.